Hi everyone, I'm Paul Ofanos, National Community Engagement Manager at Delphi Bank, which is a division of the Bendigo Adelaide Group, and welcome to Delphi Connect, a segment where as part of our commitment to community engagement, we bring you leading experts from fields as far and wide as economics and the markets, property, health, scientific research, the arts, community affairs, just to name a few. Hopefully you'll find our segments both informative and enjoyable. Let's move straight on to today's guest, Bill Papastergiadis, President of the Greek Community of Melbourne and Victoria. Bill, welcome to our segment. Thanks, Paul, and it's good to be with you and good to be with the Delphi Bank um, through this program known as Delphi Connect. Obviously, Delphi Bank plays an important role in our community, being the banker to our community organisation, um, was right behind, right behind our organisation when we first uh, conceptualised our 15-storey cultural centre building, um, stood beside us throughout that process, and is also my personal uh, bank as well. So there's a strong personal and commercial connection between the community, myself, yourself, and the bank. Well, thanks for those comments, Bill. Uh, we're certainly living through unusual times uh, with COVID-19, uh, having uh, a de have a devastating effect on the general Victorian community. The Greek Australian community in Victoria has certainly been hit hard. Uh, just some general thoughts, uh, uh, Bill. Well, as we know, COVID doesn't have any boundaries. It doesn't draw distinctions between ethnicities. And unfortunately, the Greek community, like many other communities in this country, has been deeply affected um, by this virus, and as we know and as has been reported, as of today being Friday, um, in mid-August, uh, approximately 80 people of Greek background have sadly lost their lives. Our thoughts go out to their families. It's devastating for our community. Many of these people are members or were members of the Greek community of Melbourne, our organisation. So we're really seeing a transitioning of that first generation um, away from us, which is very sad to me personally. And we certainly hope that in the near future, a vaccine becomes available so that you know we can spare the lives of our vulnerable citizens and community members, and that we can return to some normality without the anxiety that so many people are currently experiencing, as well as the economic dislocation, uh, which is being felt throughout our community. I'd certainly like to echo your, your sentiments there, Bill, and on behalf of uh, everyone at Delphi Bank, express our condolences to all those that have lost uh, loved ones during the pandemic. Uh, how have you uh, been coping, Bill, during this uh, 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 these unusual times? And also, how's uh, everyone at uh, uh, the Greek community of Melbourne, the staff there, been coping? Sure. Um, look, we've, we've tried to take an optimistic approach to all of this and to find new ways to reinvent ourselves, both uh, from a personal perspective and from a community perspective. Uh, there is no hiding from it. From a community perspective, it has profoundly affected our capacity to provide the services that we historically have done so. It has enormously limited our cultural output. I mean, as a festival, we have basically gone off the cliff, you know, as a festival provider. You know, the film festival has fallen away, the writers' festival, the food festival, all of the other important cultural productions of our community have disappeared. Um, the important thing is, is that we have reinvented ourselves in a number of ways, such that from an educational perspective, we, have, we haven't had um, much of an impact in the sense that we've brought all of our educational services online. Mm -hmm. All of our students are now following education uh, through their homes, through the web, with a lot of personal attention from their teachers. Importantly, what it's done is it's creating an opportunity to expand our educational services beyond the normal physical classroom uh, presence to being online such that we can offer it to Victorians right across our state, not only, you know, the people who are attending our schools, for example, whether it was in Turak or whether it was in Doncaster or whether it was in the northern suburbs, you can be anywhere now in Victoria. And for a lot of our kids that were prevented from following Greek school classes because 
they were in sports training. We know that soccer plays an important uh, part of our kids' lives. Um, those kids that were prevented from attending school because they were in soccer uh, sessions, well, guess what? We can now tailor our educational services in a way where you can do it in times outside of your training. And so it's helped us to reinvent ourselves in that regard. We've continued to provide services uh, to the community through our plays that are being broadcast on SBS, again, through our kids. Um, and we've also continued with our seminar programs, which where we bring some of the leading academics and scholars um, uh, and thinkers from around the world to our community. That has continued through the hard work of Nick Dallas and also the head office infrastructure run by George Manitis and also Costa Vrognitis and Costa Marcos. So the community has continued, obviously not in the same format that we'd expected because this year was going to be a great and exciting year. We had planned this year to take with us, for example, from a business perspective, um, 100 Australian businessmen and business people to the Thessaloniki Trade Fair. We'd organise a major event with the Victorian government for that perspective. That has fallen through, unfortunately. We were bringing to Australia the uh, Economic Development Minister of Greece. That fell through, the Justice Minister of Greece. We were also in discussions with um, the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister of Greece had indicated to me last year that, Bill, I want to be at the festival, the Greek Community Festival, the Lonzo Street Antipodes Festival, because I've heard it's the best and largest festival globally for the Greek diaspora. He certainly wanted to be there. That had to fall through. So a lot of these connection points for us between Greece and Australia um, didn't happen. I'm hoping they'll happen in 2021, but we are adjusting. We are staying positive and we are staying connected, but they are difficult times. We certainly are all uh, reinventing ourselves, Bill. Yeah, absolutely we are. We are. Bill, COVID-19 has also caused some issues with Greek citizens on visas not being able to go back to Greece. I believe you've had discussions with the Prime Minister of Greece about this issue. How has the Greek community of Melbourne been able to help this group of people? Well, we went on the front foot with this immediately and made contact with the relevant minister being Minister Tudge, with whom we have a great relationship. And um, so we had two meetings with him in terms of what services the federal government could offer. Unfortunately, they were quite limited in that um, they had budgeted a particular amount to provide assistance throughout Australia. Uh, visa students and people on a variety of other visas did not factor into that uh, conversation. Despite our protestations, we couldn't have and didn't have a major impact on their thinking, unfortunately. We did speak and were communicating with the Prime Minister's office as well and wrote a number of letters, and they were in conversation with us about those letters. But what we decided to do was to take uh, the initiative ourselves directly. And we set up a number of, uh, of uh, initiatives, including firstly, a general advice line uh, manned by five people at the Greek community of Melbourne, again, set up by um, George Menetis, Rukosta Marcos and um, Steve Messinas and a number of, the, of our staff members who answered uh, as a general hotline all of the questions that these uh, people who were in a very unfortunate position had dealing with their visa, dealing with government services, dealing with making applications to government, um, uh, dealing with health-related issues. Equally, we, we with the assistance of the uh, organisation that provides support to the New um set up a service to provide uh, free psychological assistance to anyone in our community, in particular to uh, the Neofermeni, that is these visa holders who are experiencing anxiety, depression and other emotional difficulties. Uh, we were a conduit for handouts, worked closely with the Archdiocese um, and with the Archimandriti here in Northcote, uh, who's doing an excellent, excellent job there. So we're, we're around, we're providing as much service as we can but again, there's no avoiding uh, the difficult conversation that people are having significant uh, difficulties, particularly those from Greece on visas. 
Bill, let's move away from the pandemic for a moment and focus on one of the highlights, and you touched upon it before, one of the highlights of the Greek community calendar being the Lonsdale Street Festival. It's certainly grown not only in size, but I'd say in stature over the years. Can you give me your thoughts? And you, you, I suppose you mentioned what that may not go ahead or, or may uh, be affected next year, but your thoughts as to where the festival it is today and where you would like to see it in five years' time? So today it's transitioned significantly from the past in that we have now doubled its footprint. Historically, it was between um, on Lonsdale Street, between Swanson Street and um, Russell Street. Now, because of its popularity, it meant that it was highly populated, very little room to navigate your way around, and equally, didn't provide a place for you to stop, converse, and meet, which is what we like doing as Greeks, and to watch the world go by. So we doubled the footprint. We extended it all the way um, from Russell Street to Exhibition Street. That enabled us to create three stages catering to the different needs of our community. We've got our main stage, but then we had the educational stage, we had a cooking stage, and we also had our community stage as well, uh, run by a variety of different uh, groups. And as the day progressed into the night, these stages took on a different form. On the Saturday night, we, had, we would have our main event from Greece, whether it was historically Hadziyani or you know some of the big, big um, names from Greece. But on our smaller stages, we would have our live music or DJ events which absolutely rocked. And they were just as busy as our main stage was with thousands of young people enjoying the beauty of what Greek culture brings around the world, which is the sense of safety, which is a sense of a number of generations coming together, which is a sense of uh, a vibrant community. And um, by expanding the footprint, we've created the opportunity for us to come and to stay in this event, we commissioned a study with Melbourne University, which produced a 200-page report about the economic, social and cultural benefits of this festival. It revealed that the attendees at this, this festival are 50% non-Greeks. Okay. A significant number come from outside of Melbourne and around Australia, from our, um, from our country area and from other cities who come here because they get the opportunity to experience a different form of culture in Melbourne um, for an entire weekend. And for them, that is an enormous cultural experience. Now, that says a lot about the Greek community of Melbourne, our organisation, says a lot about the multicultural feel of our city and our country. And our congratulations go out to our federal and also our state premiers and prime ministers and relevant ministers who are responsible for creating this feel. And, um, for enabling us to provide this service offering. Now, we do it at a significant cost. We do lose hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we think it's an important investment. And it's an investment because it also brings, and I think we're the only festival in Australia that brings our leaders to our festival, that is our political leaders. So it brings an opportunity for our community to connect with our leaders you know, as they do their walkthrough, as Bill Shorten did, um, this year, as Daniel Andrews has, as as Julia Gillard has, and Tony Abbott, and Malcolm Turnbull, and um, all of all of the leaders that have, or prime ministers that have walked through, as well as every single premier, whether it's Ted Bailey, Napthine, um, Brumby, uh, or Daniel Andrews, they all made sure this is their focal point. So it brings them there, but also gives them an opportunity to talk in Greek. So for that day, they are thinking from a Hellenic perspective and they're thinking about what are the issues that are confronting Greek Australians? How is it that we can contribute? And generally, they use our festival as a platform to announce major initiatives, in other words, to fund our events. And I think all of these things coming together all go well for our community going forward because we are seen as one of the leading ethnic communities in Australia. I'd like to think that Greece sees us as the leading uh, Greek organisation and community 
in the global Greek diaspora. The festival plays an important role in that because it brings so many people who are attentive, well-behaved and community-minded to one place over a weekend. And for me, really, it's one of the highlights of, you know, being Greek Australian in our city, in our country. It's, it's certainly, it was certainly a, a, a great event and those of us with a, a Hellenic background are very proud of what you've been doing there, Bill. Uh, uh, once a month on uh, Thursday evenings from about March to September, the Greek community uh, of Melbourne building uh, is buzzing, Bill, with its uh, very popular lecture series. And I think you alluded to it before. Now, I've attended some of the talks in person as well as recently just uh, listening to some of them online and found them very informative. How did this lecture series come about? What's its scope? And are the lectures open to everyone? Well, of course, they're open to everyone. Um, the Greek Community of Melbourne uh, is a non-for-profit organisation and um, these lectures at significant cost to us again because there is some cost quite often in bringing these academics and dignitaries to, to Australia and to Melbourne. Uh, we bear the cost of that. Uh, entry is free of charge at the Greek Community of Melbourne. With COVID, we've moved online and only two weeks ago, Paul, I... I followed, I've been following him generally, but I followed the one on the Chandris family. Same here, I saw that. Very, very, uh, very, brought back memories. Yeah. And how much did we find out about that journey by our parents from Greece and how those ships were put together, what yes. was constituted in terms of making them happen, what took place on those ships, what happened to those ships thereafter? You know, these, these massive ships had a life of their own, as did our parents. And um, I was it was a fascinating story. So all of these unique stories are coming out in the course of this seminar series that have been running for a number of years under the initiative of Nick Dallas. Nick Dallas, um, Dr. Nick Dallas, who's uh, done a terrific job in finding so many different people with so many different stories to tell that have um, enlightened all of us on on subject matter that is not only Hellenic, but is connected to us as Hellenes. And, you know, for example, I find always the openings of the writers of the um, seminar series to be fascinating because we generally bring some peak um, uh, writers and, and academics. And, like, for example, I found uh, Associate Professor Foley's story on the relationship between Greeks and Aborigines, and in particular his story uh, where he was talking about um, the former, and, and his name now escapes me, uh, senior bureaucrat who played a role in the Aboriginal community and who uh, was also a proficient soccer player who said the only time that he felt part of um, Australia was when he joined the Greek Olympic soccer team because he was also an excellent soccer player and that the Greeks welcomed him in a way that made him feel Australian for the first time in his life. And so all of these fabulous stories come to light through um, not only the seminar series but the Writers' Festival. And I remember when we did the Writers' Festival a few years ago and we had at the opening Christos Chalkas, you know, who's, one, who's a world-famous writer. You know, well, his man. books have been turned into films, feature films, and also um, series. And I've, it's, it's, you know, I've spent a little bit of time with my children who are 14 and 16 watching his films like Barracuda or The Slap, and they loved them. And so, again, through the Writers' Festival and also the seminar series, you know, we've had an opportunity to connect these stories back into Melbourne, Australia, and around the world. And during COVID, of course, they're online. So everyone should participate, uh, log into our website, um, and you'll be able to follow them. Uh, Bill, the Greek community of Melbourne has been in talks, I believe, with the National Library of Greece in relation to setting up of a global Greek diaspora library. Can you give us an update of how this initiative is coming along? Yep, that's progressing well. So we had and reached agreement with the National Library of Greece, which is now housed 
um, from its old building, which was in, in the centre of the city, and which unfortunately housed some of the most amazing books. I mean, for example, it had a 30 or 40 of the original um, manuscripts of the Bible being right. housed in some uh, very poor conditions, which have been now been taken to the new centre building uh, Palio Fallero, um, and which is a billion dollar building, uh, state of the art. The director is a good friend of ours. All of his, all of the material in the National Library of Greece will be digitally available to our members, which I think is an important start. What we're doing at the moment is also cataloging, cataloging from a digital perspective, all of the books that we house at the Greek Community Centre. They are available for research purposes and for people to come through and, and spend an afternoon there. We've built the online tool to enable all of this uh, digitalization to take place. Once COVID is over, uh, we should have a big launch to bring all of this to light, Paul. That's great, that's great. We mentioned the uh, Handris lines before that brought many of our parents uh, from uh, uh, Greece to Australia. Uh, and basically they were fleeing, Bill, and ec the economic hardship that existed in a, a war-torn homeland. Uh, and they worked very hard in Australia. Many of them, though, did face initial hurdles in setting up a life in their adopted homeland. Do you feel there are any barriers in 2020 for Greek Australians navigating their way through Australian society? I'd like to think that in this current era, in this modern era, that we are citizens of the world and that we try and break down the nationalistic barriers that have created and caused so much uh, distress uh, through wars and um, and conflict. So uh, from that perspective, um, I'm all for the, uh, the breaking down of these barriers and we as a community, I think, have tried to embrace the Greeks from Greece who have migrated here over the last 10 years as a result of the economic crisis that afflicted Greece. Uh, we uh, initially lobbied the federal government and the then Immigration Minister Chris Bowen to success and set up a fair at Thessaloniki to enable uh, Australian businesses to recruit from Greece. Um, we also uh, worked hard to set up and lobbied again the federal government here and Greece to set up, set up the tourist working visa agreement. We need to know that uh, Greece was one of the few countries that didn't have a tourist working visa agreement with Australia. It was the only country in Europe that didn't have it. Turkey has one. Most of the countries in South America have got one, but Greece didn't. It took us seven years to get out of the line in Greece. In Australia, the uptake was very quick, but it happened in Greece. Now that's up and running. They're our initiatives. There are a lot of things that we were doing to make sure that we further develop the relationship. I'd like to say that to all of the Greeks that have come here, I tip my hat to them because migration is never an easy, easy thing. To economically and emotionally dislocate you from your homeland, I think has to be the most difficult experience for any person. It speaks volumes about our parents are able to do it with the barrier of language and culture. I think it's easier these days, but nevertheless still very hard. Um, there are a lot more government programs that are available to a system when now we're here. They have the benefit of online Facebook relationships through ENA and a number of other groups that you know provide support and connection for them. The Greek Community of Melbourne through its support services, we lobbied the state government um, and then set up the one-stop shop for these Greek migrants um, through funding from the state government uh, to be able to transition into society here. Bronya played a, an important role in that, so we would like to thank them for that. And what we also did is we, again, with the support of the state government, set up schools for Greeks from Greece for their kids to continue to learn the Greek language because their children were at a much higher level than, for example, my kids, and were they were losing interest in continuing to participate in Greek school. So we set a higher level, a higher bar for those students um, at Greek school and to be able to continue with their Greek language and a curriculum specifically for them and with teachers who would help them 
through that journey so that they maintained their Greek language and took it through to the BCE. And importantly, we lobbied the Victorian government and were successful. And as of next year, there will be two streams for the Greek language. Chinese are right four, four streams, but there will be two streams so that we continue to hold on to kids no matter what their level is. So I encourage everyone to encourage their children, as I'm encouraging my children, to continue with studying the Greek language because they will thank us later. And also, I'd like to think that our teachers these days are slightly more attuned to the needs of our children than perhaps you and I experienced growing up with our Greek school teachers who were uh, a little bit more frank and and physical with us, unfortunately. Possibly as we, old. Um, progressed our way. That old school did intimidate quite a few of us um, and drove a few of us away from Greek school, unfortunately. Uh, recently, uh, Bill, and possibly as a sign that the Greek Australian community is maturing, the Greek community of Melbourne has moved away from positioning itself as just an insular group and is assisting other communities. Can you explain in what ways this help is being provided to these other communities? So we've worked with the South Sudanese through work by Fortis Capitopoulos um, and Theo Marcos in terms of ensuring that we act as some as a mentor um, to community groups, particularly from a language perspective. So we're trying to help them with their own educational programs because we know the more we keep kids in school, the better it is that they will then work with their communities and then become good citizens um, in Melbourne and in Australia. We've worked with the Ukrainian community in terms of who came to see us about our cultural centre. Um, same with the German community who came to see us with their consul general and basically said, give us a blueprint about this building that we're in a 15 storey cultural centre, but importantly, how you've been able to keep your youth active and interested within your community. We've uh, done a number of initiatives with New Gas so that any member of New Gas becomes a member of the Greek community. So we're fostering the future leaders of our Greek community and we've recently reignited that relationship through their president, Sadinas, who's doing a great job, and Dean Katsianis, who's uh, finished univ uh, at university, um, also setting up his own group. We had this year, at the start of this year, the Hellenic Youth Forum and Conference, which is an enormous success. We work with U3A, which is a university of the third age. We're setting up the Diaspora Studies, Diaspora Studies course at Melbourne University, funded by Melbourne University and the federal government that we lobbied very hard on it to the value of $5 million that we will have a global chair providing research on our community and the breadth of the work our community does outside of, you know, insular Greek-related matters. From a cultural perspective, you know, we've been working with the Melbourne International Festival and we did the concert with Khadzianis and had 7,000 people there at the, at the the in the city at the concert there at the Sydney Maya Music Bowl. With um, Farah Duri, we work with the Melbourne Jazz Festival. Uh, we work with the Melbourne Comedy Festival where they use our centre as one of the major events and 20,000 people pass through there watching a variety of events as well as bringing great comedians to Melbourne. We work with the Fringe Festival, uh, with Humanities 21 through the Homer Festival. We've lobbied the federal government to set up a new centre for our youth and our elderly, which hopefully uh, once we find the right building near the Greek community building, continue to develop the Lonsdale Street precinct, we'll be able to announce that and bring that sort of vibrancy back into the centre. So there's a lot going on culturally from an educational community perspective to make sure that we broaden our relationships um, in Melbourne and Australia and globally. Certainly a lot of initiatives there, Bill. Uh, you're, you've been president for the community for 12 years now. What achievements in your capacity as president um, are you more, most proud of? Well, they span the personal to the structural. Um, the 15-storey cultural centre, I think, that adorns uh, Lonsdale Street and has the uh, disco volo, that is the disco the discus throw on the outside of the building, if you photograph it, it becomes very apparent. And through the state government, uh, the funding of the replica of the Parthenon frieze that will be al along the entire perimeter of our building so that, you know, we bring the Parthenon uh, to life here in Melbourne 
uh, and they're being built out of the marble that the Parthenon frieze was built in Greece by the authorised Parthenon uh, uh, Museum um, marble builders. So we've commissioned them. It's going to be a great, an amazing piece that's going to adorn us within hopefully six to 12 months. Um, that building, as well as the you know, $20 million worth of infrastructure works we've spent at Uffington Grammar, which has now been recognised in recent times as the leading school in the north. Uh, I think it's the North East, one of the leading schools there. Amazing results under Vivian Niku and past chairs of that school, like Niko Kovitaki and uh, Professor Papyrus. Um, that school is just going from you know strength to strength, really. And then it's also the relationships that were built here and in Greece, you know, whether it's government or community, you know, to bring our community together. And for me, the enduring relationships. The fact that we've united that community, the fact that we've kept our board together in a harmonious way, because if you looked at the history of the Greek community, which has been around for well over 120 years, prior to us coming on board, every board that was elected for the previous 120 years fractured within three months. And there would be two or three subgroups fighting with one another and with you know them achieving a lot of things, but doing so with a lot of disharmony. We've managed to take the politics out of the community, you know, and what I mean by that is that, you know, your political affiliations have no relationship to our cultural and, and educational um, portfolios. We've ensured that we've maintained a cohesive internal uh, group, which can then present a cohesive message externally. And that's why government comes to us because they come to us because they know they can deal with adults in an adult conversation and that we are a group that achieves and brings to fruition uh, its objectives. So, you know, it's those relationships that for me um, I feel most proud about over the last 12 years. And you should, and you should, Bill. Uh, just before we finish, apart from being president of the Greek community of Melbourne, you're also managing partner of Moraine Agnew, one of uh, Australia's leading uh, law firms. With many people now working from home, what do you think the operating rhythm will look like, Bill, post COVID-19 for organisations such as Moraine Agnew? Do you feel that we're all going to go back to the office or we're going to go back to the office Will most people be working remotely or will it be a mixture of both? I think, Paul, it'll be a mixture of both. And I think this is a good question. I, I initially was um, opposed to uh, remote working because I enjoyed the vibrancy of a buzzing law office. You know, we had 175, 180 people in our Melbourne office and I enjoyed walking the corridors. I fed off the energy of our younger lawyers I enjoyed the camaraderie of my partners that I've been in business with and I'm friends with for the last 20 to 30 years. Again, that's been an important part of my life to have enduring uh, business relationships. I enjoyed clients coming in and going out for coffee. Um, the, all of these things um, made me get out of bed, gave me a purpose in life and being a service provider because the Greek community is a service provider, as is the law. We are there to transition and help people through some of the most difficult times in their life, whether it's in litigation, which is incredibly traumatic, or whether it's in commercial, which is bringing a deal together. Our job is to provide a seamless service so that we can get the outcome that outcome that client wants. I'm seeing that a lot of my staff are somewhat enjoying working from home. I don't think they're enjoying the quarantine that's going on in terms of the fact that they can't leave their home at 8 p.m. and being able to do a Macca's run at 2 a.m., something I've never done, but, you know, it's a fantasy, I guess, for a lot of people. But the idea of working from home one or two days a week, I think, will be ingrained and will be part of the way that we conduct business going forward. Um, our young lawyers uh, will drive that, will drive that change. Um, I'm a little bit old school. You know, I have to admit, I do enjoy putting the suit on, being in the office, shaking hands, looking someone in the eye and have that ability to 
develop the rapport with him. And I must admit, it was a sad day for me, Yanavaro uh, Luketo, that is to put a lock on the door um, two weeks ago on that Wednesday and um, and basically shut us out from the office for, you know, the next six weeks, mm-hmm. which we've been required to do. That, you know, emotionally that was a difficult thing for me. A hybrid uh, operating model where some time is spent at the office and some time uh, is spent at home seems to be the general consensus of what a lot of organisations are looking for in the future, Bill. Thank you, Bill, for making time to be with us today. Thank you, Paul. And I'd like to finish by thanking yourself, Jim Saris, the Delphi Bank, and the Bendigo and Adelaide Bank for their continued support of our community. May I say that much of the cultural and educational uh, platform and product produced by the Greek community of Melbourne would not have been possible without your support. You have been with us since day one without asking anything of us, but rather offering your hand. We would not have been able to build our 15-storey cultural centre, which is the only one in the global Greek diaspora, without your funding commitment. Uh, May I say, may the Greek community be around for another 120 years and may the Delphi Bank be beside us for that period of time. Thank you for your kind words, Bill. That's all today for uh, Delphi Connect. On behalf of all of us at Delphi Bank, thanks for joining us. Bye for now.